Okay, but Okay, so now we are Pasuk Yudzain. Pasuk Yudzain. So in Pasuk Tedvav and Tedzain, we, uh, we addressed how uh, Shlomo Amelech uh, gives us the fundamentals of things, the reasoning behind the behavior, and does not address the punishment of a bad behavior, right? Why? Explains the Gaon, because when you understand the root of things, you don't need to be for, you, told what the punishment is to change your ways, because you understand clearly that it's wrong. And a person has a basic kavod of himself that once he realizes that he, he crosses that line of basic self-respect, so he will, he will not allow himself to do certain things, right? And that's, that's what Shlomo Amelech comes and tells us after he addresses the four types of wicked people and the four different layers of the Yetzirah. He says, Don't go with them. Not only don't go with them, don't even emulate their behavior. Because if you even pick up on one small behavior, you're going to end up becoming like them, following them. And all this because kiraglehem la raya rutsu, right? They their 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 legs run to do bad. So he said once when you see a behavior being bad. There cannot be good intentions. It, it doesn't work together. So when you see the behavior being negative, or if you see bad midot, then, 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 then you cannot lie to yourself and think the guy is trying to be good. Doesn't, doesn't work. And if you say, well, let me get close, I, I, and I always know when to pull out and when to stop, I have my own limits. I have my own, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, behavior or, or my own uh, instinct that will tell me when to stop. If you think that you're, you're analyzing them, well, you, you should know that they're not analyzing you, right? And when, when they see that you might pick up on something, they already have a plan to really take you down. That's in a nutshell uh, the 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 last two the last two king that we saw in the last show. Um, obviously, we we went in uh, in more depth, right? Uh, it's all in the last show. Okay, so now we continue. He says, the, the net that is spread on, uh, on a field of, uh, of uh, wheat or grass, right? In the eyes of, uh, the, of, the, of the bird, Baal Kanaf. Right on the, the in the eyes of the of the bird, he sees a a, a reshet, He sees a net on the floor. He says, "This is not for me. This is for somebody else." Right? It means nothing to him. Why? Because he has wings, and he thinks the bird thinks he can fly. Right? The net is on the is on the floor, is on the, on the field. So how can the net? Catches the bird. That's the the what the bird think. But in reality, the hunter, when they hunt, they hunt because they want the prey. They want the bird, or to shecht it, or to kill it and eat it. It's penun and afshotam, or to catch the bird 
to sell it alive or to put in a, to put in, in a cage and and benefit from uh, from the bird that's pasuk yudchet pasuk yudchet and then we'll go back to what it means ken orhot kol botzea batza this is the way this is the fate of all the one who pursue the un betza is unjust gains when you, you when you steal something when you take something that's not yours that's that's the fate that's how they look at things et nefesh be'alav yikach this behavior stealing manipulating controlling or the yetzerara ends up consuming and taking the nefesh of that person it takes the life of the per of, of 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 the person that's involved in that uh, in that behavior this is the the translation so the gaon explains the following The nature of the person is to always look for his own benefit. For his benefit, what gains and losses. And because a person behaves socially based on gains and losses, based on benefits, right? And sacrifices and losses. When there is a pitui, when there is a, uh, an interest or a, uh, uh, an incentive to, to make something, to get, gain something. So that incentive already triggers inside of the person a motivation to engage. So the person goes with it. And you know what? And it's not the, the, the bad part or the, the dirty part. It has nothing to do with me. I focus on the gain. I focus on what I'm going to end up with. Just like says the gown, the bird. The bird sees the net. And he sees the wheat on top of the net. And he says, the net has nothing to do with me. I have wings, I can always fly. But the wheat is what I want. So the bird goes down to eat the wheat. Recognizing that there's a net. But not understanding that the net is for him. Says the Gaon, says Shlomo Melech. Says the the uh, you the uh, in the uh, humans people make the same mistake. So we're not talking about a a a, a, a tam simple-minded person that doesn't even see the threat. We talk about a person that identifies. You know, this guy is 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 lying, or this guy is as bad midot. But you know what? I'm not getting married to the guy. I'm just doing a deal with him. I want to make money. So the net has nothing to do with me. I focus on the gain. Now, the reason why we focus on the gain is because this is the nature of men. The, the interaction socially is an interaction, says the Gaon, based on benefits and, uh, on, on, and, and losses. If there is a benefit, I engage instinctively and naturally. Now, says the Gaon, don't make this mistake, even if you recognize that there's a net. Why? It says, the mistake that you make when you understand that there is negativity, when you understand that there's a threat, same thing with the Yitzhara. My friends are going on into on, in a party. I know that in this party there's going to be there's going to be bad news. I know it. 
okay? But me, oh, I don't touch. It's not for me. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna have fun, but I'm not gonna do the bad things. But you know it's bad. You know that at the end, the fact that you go there is opening yourself to such a threat. He says it's as foolish as the bird that thinks it's going, it's going to go down to eat the wheat on the net, but the net is not for him. The net will, is not a threat. Says from Melech, learn from the mistake of the bird and apply this lesson into your own actions, whether it's with people or is, whether it's with your Yetzirah. He says, now the wheat is something that is good to the bird. It's food, right? It's satisfying. He says the Yetzerara or the manipulator or the wicked person knows how to incentivize, knows how to bring you close. There's always good, he says the intellect, the mind, the mind knows how to play tricks with the person. The rationale, Rash knows how to play tricks with the, 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 the person. And then suddenly you find all the good reasons. You remember what, what, uh, what uh, the lesson we learned from the Ganya? If you need to ask your, uh, have reasoning to do something, then you know it's wrong. Things that are good, you don't need to, you don't need any reasoning, right? Only things that are wrong, you need to, re you need good reasons to do it. But things are good, you don't need good reason because it's good. That's the yesod, that's the yesod. What's the good reason? It's the wheat that, that attracts the engagement. And then the rationale, right? The reasoning explains why this is a threat, but it's not a threat against me. That's the net. Essentially, says the Gaon, who brought the, the bird into the net? The bird itself. Because he saw the net. It saw the net. It just decided that it's not a threat. So says the Gaon Mivilna, when we fail and fall for such people in such situations or for the Yetzirah, at the end, who's to be blamed is to be blamed. Ourselves. The of. That's the message. That's the message of, uh, of, of, of Shlomo HaMelech. But what's also very interesting, he says, Sim bet al of says the Gaon. That when Shlomo Amelach gives us this example, he tells us, learn from the example in order not to make the mistake. He, Shlomo Amelach is telling us, you need examples in order to convince yourself that certain things are wrong, even though if you know them. But the example is so obvious, is so big, is so uh, uh, blunt that once you make the comparison again, what does it do? Like we said in last year, it awakes in you the ego of the minimal kavod you need to have to respect yourself. And if you fall for it, you degrade totally yourself. That pasuk yud zayin, pasuk yud chet, vehem ledamam yeerov. Says the manipulator or the yetzerara. What's is what's their interest? Ledamam yeah, when 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 the 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 the, the hunter puts the net, what does he want? He wants to get the bird and he wants to eat it. 
you're the prey. So you're only going to what? To lose from this. Like we said in last year, what do they want? They want your blood, right? Like we said, you think you laugh with people about somebody else, and then you realize that you were laughing at yourself. You are the target. It's been no enough so time. Says, and you know what? If they don't want to kill you, then at least they want to control you. They want to use you. Those are the two different levels that we spoke about. We spoke about the stealer that doesn't kill and the stealer that kills, right? So, or they want to take advantage of you and abuse you in order to 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 benefit from from you, from you, or they have no problem just throwing you at the end into a pit and and, and dismissing you as long as they, they gain something. You tet can or hold call botsea batsa. Says can a derech shall ha raim a rotsim ligrom mamon. Who behedesh you yeholim likach ali deze a nefe shall a bealim shall a mamon. He says this is the behavior of people that want to steal, that steal that want to own things that are not theirs, things they don't deserve. So he, again, he goes back into the same, I mean, at least in the Kidveyad, goes back into the same root, into the, the, the reasoning behind behavior like this is all because of desire, because of Tava, or because of anger, right? The Yetzerara will trigger inside someone a behavior that will hurt in order to benefit. But in order to benefit and, and hurt, you need to benefit the one that's gonna get hurt before he gets hurt so that you can benefit. Bye, can, can you, we will... Uh, we do that if 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 you have something and I want to take it away from you, or I I'm I'm upset at you because you have something that should be mine that I think I deserve, or that I'm jealous about you. How come you have that and not me? So the truth is is I don't deserve it because I don't have it, right? If I deserved it, I would have had it. I would have worked for it, right? How can I take it away from you so that you don't have it and I have it? Two things. Or I'm a, I'm a complete animal. I come and, uh, and I kill you and I take it, which is not what we're talking about to a certain extent, yeah. Or I'm gonna bring you, I'm gonna wait for the right opportunity to take it away from me. Now, uh, says the Gaon, I will create an opportunity. I will create a situation so that you, you become into a vulnerable position in order for me to take it from you so that I can benefit from it. So what happened? I will 
incentivize you. So I will give you something in order to put you in a vulnerable place, in order for me to hurt you, in order for me to benefit from what I want to take away from you. Good. Says, says the Gaon de Vilna, this is the behavior that people use when the, 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 the source of their motivation is anger or jealousy. It says this is a difference between the Rasha and the Tzadik. The Gemara says Tzadikim, Yetzer Tov Shoftan. The Tzadik is a Gemara in Brachot. The Yetzer Tov judges them. Meaning it's the it's the last word. The last word is the Yetzer Tov. The Tzadik is a person that evaluates a situation, finds the Emet in that situation, and will do the right thing. The Rasha, no. The Rasha, Yitzhara, Shoftan. The Yitzhara, it's what's it's my, what's my selfishness and my it's my interest that will dictate how I in, engage in a situation. So says says the Gaon, when a person wants something he does not deserve, or he wants it, he doesn't want the other one to have it or he wants it from somebody else and not work for it properly. And this happens a lot in business, a lot in business also. Yeah? Ah, I cannot believe he heard about this building or about this business. How am I gonna go and steal it from him? Yeah, he, he, he doesn't deserve that. I should take it. I'm smarter. I know how to make it happen. I know exactly how to turn it around. I cannot believe it. Where that is that coming from? If you have a Muna, if you have a Muna, okay, and it's an open process, then you go and you bid the right way. But you're not gonna go and ambush the other guy. You're gonna play fair and square. And whoever wins, wins. You go and you say, okay, I wanna give you more, but you're not gonna start and, 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 and throw somebody on a tangent. And I, says the gown, Based on the, the motive of your behavior, you are considered a tzaddik or you're considered a rasha. With all the implications that it, uh, you know, that comes with it according to the Torah. Because the tzaddik thinks with the yetzerah tov and the yetzerah and the rasha thinks with his own interests and his own desires. If, yeah. It feels like it feels like it's basically just saying the Yetzer Hatov is makes decisions based off of his brain, and the Yetzer Hara makes it based off of desires, and and that really just leads you in the two directions. Yes, but the Yetzer Hara doesn't stop with the desire; he starts with the desire and then uses the brain. Right. The oh, answers. right. It says, he says like this. It ties it into you desire brain. something. You desire right. money. You say, you know what? I'm going to take that money, but I'm going to give tzedakah. Right. I'm, going to, I'm going to buy a beautiful Sefer Torah. He says, uh, I'm going to do mitzvot. I'm going to feed the poor. <laughs> right. The Yetzirah is too smart to leave it at just desires. Bevadai. Bevadai. And that's im yefatucha. He says, "Im the pitui. What's a pitui? A pitui is a an incent, a, a incentivization, right? There's an incentive." He says, "If there is an if this is a quick spontaneous incentive that triggers an interest, for sure it's yitzerara. For sure it's yitzerara. If it's an instinct, right? If somebody tickles." Again, big yesod. Somebody comes with an opportunity, a situation. If my, if 
if there is an instinctive desire that awakes to that, be, to that uh, opportunity, it's a yetzera. Because you don't, if it's emet, you don't need an instinctive in the desire to want to, want to do it. It's just, again, it's emet. It's the right thing to do. When it's the right thing to do, it's the right thing to do. You understand? It's very fine. What again? He says, if a, a, an opportunity comes, the person that brings you this opportunity, okay, needs to spark within you an emotion, a desire. That means he's talking to your yetzerah. The alarm has to turn on. Whoa, 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 one second. This is, I don't know if this is the right thing. But if he puts things on the table and it's so clear, it's so true, it's so neat that it's the right thing to do, then you know it's a mate. Then you know it's a teraton. He says like this, Amar Shlomo Amele, Alav Shalom Bechokmatu. Sheim if atucha, if they incite you, incentivize you, and that the, the, that triggers a, a, a desire, a reaction that this is what you want. For sure, it's yetzerara. Never listen. And you know what? Nah, mitzvah. We're going to a party. I'm mean, it's called mitzvah. You know, it's good for the shiduchim. It's good for shalom bayit. I'm doing a big mitzvah. I'm going now to a party where it's uh, all tame uh, and other. Aval ze mitzvah ze shalom bayit ze shalom bayit. Ki adam shor shete kavanat yitzera letovatcha. How can some but something bad be for your benefit? It doesn't. Uh, again, it, we, we, it, the gown continues that yesod from last year. It cannot be that from something bad comes something good. That you have to do bad in order. To benefit good. It doesn't, it, it doesn't work. Wants to kill you in this world in Olam For sure, it's the Tana of the Yetzera. The Gaon is very adamant about this Yesod and very, very uh, clear about it, which Again, is a result of what? Is a result of a self-awareness that the person develops based on a uh, evaluation of the situation, number one, and the ability to find a motivation to control his yetzerara when needed. And that motivation is the dimion, is the example that the person has to have when he's comparing the situation to the example. Like the mashal, like we, uh, we brought with, the, with that Shlomo Ameler brings with the bird. Meaning if you don't have that, basically what Shlomo Ameler he says, don't rely on, uh, on, on, uh, on your own strength. You need that, uh, that spark of emotion, but that spark of emotion that will balance the emotion of the Yetzirah. So you have the, the instinctive reaction of the Yetzirah, that's great. But in order to overcome it, you need another emotion. What will be the emotion? The self-esteem, how to boost your self-esteem. <laughs> you're gonna sound like an idiot. You're gonna behave and you're gonna look like a hawa. This is what you want, ma pitom. So by tickling your, 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 your self-esteem, says basically the cells of Shlomo Amir says the Gaon, you are able to overcome the desire of falling for something that is wrong. This is the Yesod, the underlying Yesod of the Gaon. Basically in, in two words, if you want to be strong and not to do the wrong things, always, Always challenge your self-esteem, your ego, your image. 
this is this is this is how, how I want to be looked at. This is how I want to be known. I want to be looked at somebody that's a yo-yo, that's not stable, that is not honorable. I want to be known like a liar. I want to be known like a manipulator. I want to be known like somebody you cannot trust. Okay, maybe this time I'm gonna I'm gonna take a, 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 you know I'm gonna pull a fast one. But then what? People are gonna come to me. I want to be known like somebody that does not control his emotion. That's an angry person. Do I want to be known that somebody that uh, is uh, not respectful and not trustworthy and and goes around and does crazy things? It's 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 uh, it's it's very deep what the uh, you know introduces in 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 this in this Tukim of Shlomo. He's basically sending us the the the, the avoda that we have to do when the fire of the Yetzirah kicks in. In Orchot uh, Sadikim, in the introduction, he says that it's very, very difficult for a person to fight the fire of the Yotzera once it's turned on and choke it over and over again. I'll give you an example. A person does ta'ava, ta'ava of, uh, of, uh, of drugs or ta'ava of women, or whatever. and he always puts himself in an environment like that. And he, he holds on the first time, the second, at one point he's gonna crack. You cannot keep on choking yourself all the time. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So says the Orchot Sadikim, you have to be smart enough not to put yourself in situations where you're choking yourself, where you have to choke the, 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 the emotion. Start working before the fire starts. Here, Shlomo Amela brings in a, not a new element. He says, when there's a fire, turn on the fire of Torah. Turn on another fire that can be stronger than this fire. There's this emotion. There's this desire. You can turn on another desire. And what is the biggest desire that men can never give up? It's his own self-esteem. Like we said in last year. And we said it many times, right? Stanley, if you, if, if, if anybody, take anybody. Okay, and I say, you know, I'll give you a few million dollars, but I have one, I have one, uh, one tonight. I want to call all your family, your grandparents, your friends, your cousins, your business partners, everybody in a room. Okay, I'll give you, I put uh, in a bag right now a few million dollars, but I want you naked, under the table, eating like a kelp, and doing waff waff to the food of the uh, of, of the dog. Will you do it? Uh, huh? Adam is going to say yes. <laughs> never. There's something that we never, nobody will do. Right? There's a line that's called the self-respect. There's a, a level of ego that each and everyone has that not willing to break. Says the, says the, Gaon, says the Gaon here in this Tsukim. He says, how dumb do you want to be when you do what you're doing. How, do you realize how dumb you are? Do you understand how, how ridiculous your behavior is right now? That's the mashal, right? You see the bird coming down, you see the net. Does, does the bird really think the net is not for it? It's not for it? It, it? The bird has to really be stupid, right? As <laughs> well, that's exactly the, the, our behavior when we are about to do something. So says the Gaon, use that to, to hurt your self-esteem. And once you tackle, you tickle, you hurt your self-esteem, there's a survival mode that's called a reaction of, uh -huh. what about me? I, you know, I also deserve to, to and, and the person with that has the ability to overcome the, the desire of the Yetzer or the, or the Pitui, or the incentive of, 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 the, of the game. Rob, I'm not 100% I'm not sure which parak of Tehillim it was. I think it was Parak Dalit. That's what I was just looking up, where David Amelech talks about the things that you could use 
in order to fight the Yitzhara when you feel like it's overcoming you. And I think it was learning Torah, and then it like finally gets to, and if you feel like you're like about to collapse, you just say Shema Yisrael. Is that correct? Ken. Yes. Shema Yisrael is the Kabbalah to all Malchut Shamayim. Kabbalah Shamayim. Basically, Shema Yisrael is recognizing that you are a man, right? That's the differentiation between you and the animals. To a certain extent, it's, 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 it's uh, along those lines. But here, the Gaon goes uh, more in the practical aspect of it. So that's, that's, that's a very big yeso that we, we, uh, we're, uh, we're, we're learning from, uh, from Shlomo right now. Very big yeso. So we did Pasuk Yud Zayin, Yud Chet, and Yud Tet. Uh, next two psukim are Be'ezrat Hashem, uh, very interesting. So we'll stop here, and uh, here at Sunday, we'll like, we'll continue. Stanley, the, the mashal of the rabbi it was the Chazara of last week's shiur, basically. You <laughs> got everything in few words. <laughs> impossible to get everything from the rabbi in a few words, but no, you know, no, no. impossible. So, I have a beautiful day. Ben. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful day. That's the Bye bye.